This video is part of a Halloween thrift flip collab. And more about that after the first project. I'm going to transform this light cover into a glass jack-o'-lantern using a Mod Podge a wood coaster that's going to be like a little riser and this light cover that I purchased at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. That is the um, nautical jar that I made um, in the summer with the fairy lights. And since we're in fall, we're going to retire the nautical jar for now. I'm going to use the fairy lights in this pumpkin slash jack-o'-lantern. So in the beginning, what's the best way to make uh, any object look like a pumpkin? Well, to make it a pumpkin color. So I chose orange and I'm adding food dye or food color to the Mod Podge. I added yellow, which looks like red when you put it in, but then turns yellow. And then I added red to actually make it orange. And you'll see here just uh, two or three drops is more than enough. When I was happy with the color, I just painted it all on the inside, none on the outside, just on the inside. So that way it doesn't get, you know, chipped or bumped or, you know, rubbed. Um, painting on the inside also gives it a really cool sort of transparent look that I like. So I tried to get an even coat on there, even though the brush strokes are gonna make it a little bit uneven but you know, did my best. And I wasn't sure if one coat would be enough, so I did go ahead and cover my paintbrush and the Mod Podge with some plastic wrap. And in the end, I decided the one coat was just fine. I did, however, paint the riser, and I also painted the um, the pot that uh, is going to be glued to it, I put. It, I'm going to glue a pot onto the riser for the fairy light uh, battery box. I was going to try and speed along the drying process, but um, it was taking a while, so I just kind of set it to the side. I'm finishing up the paint on the little pot. I wasn't going to paint it because I thought the pink would be okay inside, but it turns out you could see the pink, so. We just went ahead and painted everything white that's going to be inside. So the pot, the riser, and the little Jenga block feet on the riser. I'm using a combination of E6000 and hot glue to adhere the pot to the riser. And then the same combination to adhere the little feet on the riser. All right, so I grabbed some of my wired jute and I just wrapped it around a marker. And then I took a length, like I pulled out a length that was going to be enough to go all the way around the top of the glass cover here. And then there's like a little lip on the glass there. So I just use hot glue and I pushed the wired jute into that lip so it was nice and even. And I brought it all the way around and kind of like crossed them so that I could um, pull up the um, little spirals, little tendrils there. I chose to just put leaves on one side. I kind of liked how that looked. And for the Halloween um, part of it, um, I thought it would be easier. I just thought it would look better. <laughs> so there I go putting the battery compartment there in the pot. And then I just kind of crumbled up the lights and then did a dry fit and it looks good. So now is the Halloween twist. We're just gonna make it into a jack-o'-lantern. So. I made it into a pumpkin for fall, and then 
we'll make it into a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. I just went into my Cricut Design Space and typed jack-o'-lantern and chose an easy one. The eyes were kind of far apart, so I just peeled them off the back end like stickers and put them closer together. Then for the mouth, I did, um, as usual, using the transfer tape and then rubbing it on with my Cricut tool and better look at the final reveal. Thanks to Lini from Crafty Lini for getting us together and creating this awesome graphic. Also participating in the playlist is Wendy from Wendy's Creative Space and Tammy from Happiness Created. Um, their, their channel links as well as a link to the playlist will be in my description box below and it's going to be awesome guys. So sit back, relax and enjoy the rest of the video. For project number two, I'm using this uh, carved wood basket, kind of looks like a purse. I'm going to make a piece of double-sided decor. You'll notice the really thick, heavy-duty metal that they used uh, when they made this. So I'm not really sure what it was made to be, but we're going to transform it. So on the fall side of this, I'm going to do some sunflowers. I had some napkins that I've had in my stash for quite a few months. This is the one I chose for this particular piece of decor. I'm doing a fussy cut on the sunflowers, which just means I'm cutting detail. What I'm actually doing is cutting away the white part. Um, I didn't want that on the wood. I didn't think it would look good and i don't do a lot of fussy cutting so um like brenda from rustic and lace does um i decided to fussy cut it this time and i played around the placement whether i wanted the big sunflower on top or bottom so before i decoupage i am going to separate the two plies so i'm only working with the ply that has the image on it. I'm using Mod Podge for this and I'm putting a pretty thick coat on. The wood is kind of uneven, definitely not flat or smooth. So I wanted to make sure I got a good coat on there and got good adhesion of the napkin to the wood. I started to hurry along the drying process and realized it was just going to take away too long. So I took a break. And then when I came back, I was ready to do some ironing. I'm actually using a heat press from Hippo. Do you call ironing if you use a heat press? I'm not sure, but I love this little heat press. Um, I rubbed all, uh, all around the napkin on top. I did the sides. The sides on this were smooth and rounded, so it's really easy to attach the napkin <laughs> and bring it over the edges. And I just think that's like a more finished look than just cutting it off at the edge. And then use the heat cuffs, just because we do have those uneven spots on the wood. I just want to make sure that everything I heated it with the heat press and then rubbed the parchment paper over it. And I'm really happy with the result. Now for the Halloween twist on this piece of decor, I'm going to rub some uh, li uh, Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint on the opposite side, otherwise known as the Halloween side. I considered putting um, some fall words on the side with the sunflower, but changed my mind. So back to work on the Halloween part. I went into my Cricut Design Space and just typed Happy Halloween and chose again one of the more simple selections and I made it bigger so it would fit the whole um, area that is available. Um, a lot of times I make it too small. I don't know why, like I'm worried about going over the edges. But this time I did good <laughs> and it filled in the whole spot. 
And again, just the simplicity of the actual piece of decor called for like a simple, a simple choice of words, a simple design. And again, just like I showed you in the previous project, I used the transfer tape to put the words down. And then I don't normally do this, but I painted some, well, I shouldn't say paint. I uh, put some Mod Podge on top of it because it was super shiny. And it also helps the words stay on longer. I had this burlap ribbon in my stash. I believe it came from Dollar Tree. And I just tied it on um, that metal part there where it joins. There's like, um, I think they're called eye hooks that join to the handle. And I used some Dollar Tree jute to just tie the bow onto that metal part. Um, and when I add the florals, you don't really see it on the fall side because the florals kind of cover it up. So it, it's meant to be on the Halloween side. It's meant to be most visible on the Halloween side because of the black matching with the black and the words. But I will give you a better look at this during the final reveal. Project number three is the fall bird's nest. It's more of an assembly, really, than a craft, but I've wanted to use one of these birds for so long. I purchased a box of various sizes, colors, shapes of birds from eBay. And uh, just never got around to using them. So we're going to make a little fall nest and then give it a Halloween twist at the end. I chose these sort of peachy white fall leaves that um, came from Dollar Tree. They're just called maple leaves. Um, and I put in a few little flowers that sort of match the color of the leaves. So um, I'm using this old candle holder that's been sitting in our back room. It's an unconditioned room, super hot. And the candle has kind of melted down into the holder so you can see I'm just kind of like using this uh, butter knife to pry the wax out and warm it up first so it's easier. I timed it. It actually took me like 14 minutes to get this out so it was a process. The heat gun was pretty helpful. I don't think I would have been able to get it out without warming it up first. And then when I got almost all the wax out. I just um, set it down and heated it and wiped it with paper towel and paper towel absorbed the wax. And I mean, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe the transformation just taking the wax out of it. So um, I want to thank Beth from Pearl Treasure Design because she did some birds in uh, these rope nests that she created she created the nest with rope and in a circular shape but i'm using raffia i just kind of liked the raffia i thought it said fall more than a rope did and i'm trying to get you know very fallish halloweenish here so raffia it is and then i just selected a few leaves and this little white pumpkin that i pulled off of a pick and I did hot glue them because I didn't want them falling off when I moved it around. And it's also pretty easy to pull off something that's been hot glued um, if you want to change it up for the seasons. So I popped uh, those on and um, I think this is wheat. I think they, Dollar Tree calls these um, tall sort of burgundy colored ones wheat. I'm not exactly sure, but I thought it needed something a little bit darker in there and a little bit more fall looking. So I chose those and then I just used my scissors to clean up the raffia. And now for the Halloween twist, I left everything the same, but I added a little jack-o'-lantern that I created using an orange pumpkin and I kept a little bit of the pick on the bottom so I could 
poke it into the raffia behind the bird. I created a simple jack-o'-lantern face with the triangle eyes and the toothy grin using my functional black marker. I think it's acrylic. Um, don't quote me on that though. So I, after looking at this, I felt like it needed just a little bit more Halloween embellishment. So I used this um, orange, uh, orange gingham pattern ribbon and created a simple uh, awareness bow. And I'll give you guys a better look at this during the final reveal. <laughs> 